slurp this shit up. Uh, you're gonna need three or four programs to do it, so the first program you're gonna need is either Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects, basically anything that you can render a video out in. The uh, second program you're gonna need is Buju, and I'll have all the names in the description. And the third one is uh, just Cinema 4D. So, uh, first, before you start, just go download Buju if you don't already have it. I have Buju 4.1. I believe there's a Buju 5, and I have it on my other computer, but I don't like it as much. I suggest you get 4.1 because that's what I'm using, and it works pretty well. So, first, I'm going to go ahead and go right into Vegas. And, uh, I got a clip directly from Black Ops because I like the dolly cam system in it. It's just like key framing in Cinema 4D, so I use that because you can get really smooth camera movements. You can use any clip. You can be a real life clip or Modern Warfare 2 or whatever. So here's my clip. It's on Hanoi. So there's that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the audio, disable resample, and uncheck maintain aspect ratio. Get rid of the black bars, and then uh, Buju calculates the image by contrast points, so high contrast objects. So, for example, like this flag is high contrast compared to the wall that it's on, so we'll track that point. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to add an effect, and then go to Sony brightness and contrast. And then I just like to drag the contrast up. I'm gonna go about 30. That'll work, and it's just gonna make Buju's job easier. That'll be good. Alright. Now you're gonna wanna have a, a folder ready to put this image sequence into because there's gonna be a lot of images, and you don't wanna put this on your desktop because you won't be able to get it off. Or you will, but it'll suck to have to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, file, render it out. I'm gonna go to a. Uh, folder that I know I can just throw pictures into. Let's go track sequence. Um and then save as type, go down to image sequence. I'm gonna do a PNG, usually I do JPEG, but PNG is a higher quality, so I suggest you do that too. And I'm just gonna name it in the way. And then it should go really quickly, because image sequences take no time to render out. And uh the only difference between a PNG and a JPEG in Buju is number one, PNG is better quality, like I said earlier, and number two, uh, PNG comes with a mask, whereas a JPEG doesn't, so it's just gonna ask you if you wanna keep one layer for a mask or some shit like that. I don't even know what it's talking about. So, uh, I'm gonna fast forward this, and I will get back to you guys when it's done rendering. Alright guys, I'm back, and this thing's just about done rendering. As you can see, it only took about a minute and 20 seconds, so very short render time. Not very bad at all. So, uh, there we go, that's done. I'm just gonna exit, I'm not gonna save, don't really need to right now. Then, gonna go ahead and open up Buju. Alright, now, this is what it looks like. And, uh, most of the shit on the screen you're not even gonna be using, so, uh, you're going to go up to your toolbox and then click import sequence, it's the only button up there that you can click. And then you're going to find the folder where you just saved all of your images. Or your, yeah, your image sequence. I saved under track sequence. And it's called Annoy. There it is, right there. So you're going to double click the first image and then two images should pop up. That'll be the first and the last. Just hit apply. And then it's going to ask you, uh, would you like to use the alpha channel as a mask? I'm just going to hit no. I have no idea what the fuck that even means, so that's why I'm hitting no. Then hit close. And now what you're going to do is you're going to track the features. So click track features, and then we're going to set it up to optimize our settings. So go ahead and click advanced, because uh, there's a lot of dots on the screen. That's a lot of tracking points, which could potentially slow down your computer. So I'm going to bring the sensitivity down, and then I'm going to bring the feature scale to large which means that there's a bunch of points or there's a lot of objects and stuff in the scene so I want to only track uh, a few points as opposed to every single one that it sees so that should do right there and then we're just going to go ahead and hit start and uh, this will take hmm, a minute or so so I'll join you guys again when it's finished
Alright guys, the, the tracking is finished and you can just go ahead and scroll through your video and you'll see that the tracking points are fixed to uh, specific locations throughout the scene. So once you're satisfied with that, you don't really have to mess with it at all. You're going to go ahead and click camera solve and then check both of these advanced solve refinement boxes. Uh, optimize radial distortion parameters and optimize camera path smoothness. Make sure both of them are checked. And then just go ahead and hit start. This may take longer, it may take less time depending on I don't know really how Buju's feeling, so I'm just gonna go ahead and join you guys once again when this is finished. Alright guys, I'm back and the camera solve is finished. So once it's done you're gonna have a uh, plethora of all these weird little blue and yellow dots throughout your scene. And if you scroll throughout it you'll see that they are perfectly fixed to certain points and these are the final points that are essentially gonna be in your Cinema 4D scene. So now we're just going to tweak them a little bit, make them just a little bit better. So you're going to want to go up to 3D Tasks, and then you're going to want to go to, uh, let's see, Assess Lens Distortion, and then hit Assess Radial, and let it do its little job, and then hit Accept and Adjust, and let it load again. And what this is going to do is it's going to better align the points uh, during the export from Bougie to Cinema 4D and usually you have to do this step yourself but the computer calculates it for you which is nice and now um... let's see i believe we go model tools nope nope solve tools go to solve tools and go to filter structure and then i'm just going to go ahead and hit fifty which will better center them let's see i'll hit control z you can see that there's points throughout the scene that don't come in until much later or much before but then if we just, you know, do the uh, filter structure to 50, it will center the focus, the focal point, and then all the points that we need are really where we only want them, which is in the center. So that looks good for that. And now this is probably the most important part, guys, is adding scene geometry. So we have this all tracked out, but if we export it to Cinema 4D, how does Cinema 4D, which way is up, which way is down, what are the walls, what's the floor, how should it know? Like, you can't just automatically know, you have to input the information. So you're going to hit this button, Add Scene Geometry, and then Add Coordinate from Hint. And now change the type from Origin. I'm going to do X-axis, so this is left to right. I'm just going to find a good little example of a left to right uh, points in my scene. So this corner point, and then hold down control, and then hit something along the x-axis. I don't know if you guys can see, but the markers that I just selected, there's two of them. They're green now, not yellow or blue. And then they are ones here, and then ones here, which makes a good uh, x-axis between them. So I'm going to hit connect to selected. Now I'm going to hit add coordinate from hint again. And I'm going to select the z-axis, which is front to back. So I'm going to find a good example of that. Mm. But those two points will do really nicely, so I'm going to hit connect to selected. Add coordinates from hint again. And uh, let's see if I can find a good example of a y axis. I'm not going to even try and find a y axis, guys, because it's usually pretty hard to find one. So I'm going to change this to an origin and then just scroll throughout the scene and pick the point that's in the center of the screen the most of the time. So I'm just going to go ahead pick that point and then hit update coordinate from frame and it's not going to really tell you it's not going to say okay it's done this job you just have to keep on clicking it I just click it like four times just to make sure that it's actually done it and then hit close and now you're going to go export export camera solve where it says camera solve make sure it's matching with this so this is camera solve one this is camera solve one export type make sure it's dot cinema 4d make sure it's a uh, moving camera static scene Make sure that the scale seen by is 1. Some tutorials will tell you to put it to 10 or 100. Don't do that. Just leave it at 1. And then uh, just select your output folder where you want this solved to go. So I'm just going to put it somewhere where I can easily find it. I'm going to name it. Or no one. Hit save. And then hit save again. And I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. And now we're going to go into Cinema 4D. And notice, guys, that I have not done any of this work before this tutorial, so I'm doing it as I'm showing you how to do it, which is kind of proof that it works. So, shut the fuck up. Alright, so now we're in Cinema 4D. What we're going to do is File, Merge, 
and then go ahead and find the uh, solve that you just saved. I named my Hanoi, so it's right here, Hanoi.c4d. Double click, leave it at 10, hit OK. And then you're going to have a camera and a bunch of points. So hit plus on your top null, and then hit this black uh, four cornered box thing, which will put you through the eyes of the camera. And now you're going to click and hold down this button, add a background, add a floor. I'm going to make the floor invisible in the editor for now just by double clicking the top little circle in the object editor. Double click, make a new material, um, delete specular, then under color, go to the little button right here next to texture, then click load image. And then um, I'm going to find the original image sequence that we made. So let's find it there it is no way gonna once again just select the first image and then when this pops up click no and then hit this bar right here go to animation then hit calculate and now you have your texture so drag this over to your background let's go ahead let's play it through see if it worked and this little four corner thing should be lined up with it pretty nicely and that looks really nice actually so I'm really happy with that and then uh, I'm going to make my floor visible again. Then you're going to add the texture to your floor. But then select your texture only on the floor. Click this little button so it's or or highlighted in orange. Go down to project projection. Click frontal. And then select your floor. Right click. Cinema 4D tags. Compositing. Uncheck self shadowing. And check compositing background. And now if you render it out, it's just one seamless scene. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just add a little bit of text and add some shadows so uh... text is a little big it's a teeny bit <laughs> let's go ahead and scale that down i'm gonna once again guys i'm gonna make my floor invisible right now because the background will animate the texture will animate but the floor won't in the editor it'll only animate in the render view if that makes any sense to you guys so i'm gonna put a uh, noose just because there's a noose above it so that's my justification uh, what's a good font? I'm gonna use Antilles. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna make the depth a little bit less. You go ahead, add some caps to it. All right, that will do. I'm gonna make my floor visible again to see where my text is, and it is right on the floor. So, I'm gonna do that. Just move it forward a little bit so it's like on that little area. Rotate it, just make it look nice from here. I'm going to render it. Okay, that looks good. But if you notice, there's no real uh, shadows below it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light. And then just drag it up directly above. And then select the light, go to shadow, soft, zoom out. Drag this one in front, just to barely light the front of it. Okay. Now if you want, you can add ambient occlusion. Once again, makes it look really nice. And as you can see, there's a really shitty but dark ass shadow right there. So I'm gonna go back actually add a soft shadow map once again. Render it out. And there you got some nice shadowing on the floor. And uh that looks like it's in the scene. So if you were just to play it through and animate it out, it moves with the stage. So if you press play. Look at that, you have a motion track. Oh shit, tits. Cinema 40, why are you lagging like that, bitch? Alright, let's do that. I'm just gonna drag it through for you guys. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now, if you can see, it's kind of rotated right here. You can just uh, rotate that, make it perfect, make it centered, do all that, and it looks nice. You just scroll through and it's motion tracked in the scene. Render it out again just to check all your shadows, and that's basically all you need to know. That's how you motion track. So, I hope this helped you. And yeah, this has been Firm. Suck my nipples. Peace out.